All right, we're back here on the workbench with my 1964 Fender Spring Reverb Unit. And the last things we need to do is replace this 250 microfarad six volt cap there and then flip it over and work on the doghouse. And then there's one other thing that I recently learned that has to do with the ground here, which I'll get into later in this video. But first we're gonna start with this 250 microfarad cap and I'm gonna do something that's gonna really make some people angry. <laughs> But, uh, and that's fine. Um, really, I just, I look at this as kind of an opportunity for me to do a little practice. And um, yeah, it's my own amp. And I just kind of thought it would be fun to try some different methods. So I stuffed these caps as shown in the first part of this series. And I think it came out pretty good. Um, but I wanted to try a different method. So I don't have the original Astron cap here. We do have this, uh, well, it is an old cap, but not the original. And Yes, I know it's not original. Yes, I know. Tanner, how in the world could you, or why in the world would you stuff a non-original cap in the amp? Yada, yada, yada. I get it. I totally get it. Do not do what I'm doing. Do not <laughs> take this as advice. I'm just trying something out for fun. And uh, yeah, this is fun for me. So uh, I've got another kind of similar cap um, covering as you get on the original Astrons here. So I've already took out the old cap and... Uh, and it is fairly similar, though it is a different color. I thought about just putting it in the sun and letting it sun bleach till uh, the orange left it like these have. But uh, this is just for fun. I don't really care. So uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward with trying to stuff this. Now, last time what I did is uh, stuffed or I just got a, a kind of a bigger piece of foam, cut a kind of a line out in the middle of it and put the cap inside the foam and kind of enclosed it in the foam. So there's foam all the way across it. I did check that it's not conductive and all of that. So we're good to go there. Well, another idea I had that um, actually somebody on Instagram did that I thought was a good idea is kind of taking the foam and putting the leads through the foam and treating it almost like a, uh, I don't know, like, like these are the axles and these are the wheels kind of thing. So just kind of poking it through, um, you know, like that. And then having another one on the other side so that it uh, is not fully um, encased in the foam, but instead just on the leads. So we're gonna try that here. As far as the cap I'm installing, this is a mod 250 microfarad, 25 volt. So the closest I could find. And uh, these mod caps are very reasonably priced. So I'm giving them a try in this amp. I've got these two as mod caps, and then we'll also um, install mod caps in the doghouse. But there we go. So I've already put the foam in on this side. You can see what that looks like. Make sure we're mindful of the positive side. So I want to flip it over like this and I'm just going to go ahead and poke it through like so. So you just have a lead kind of poking out. And then we will take this side and then poke the lead through it as well. Like that. And then we'll just kind of stuff it in there. Just like that. And then we can just go ahead and crimp over the edge of the cardboard here. So there you go, there's the stuffed cap. We got that side like that, this side like this. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty simple stuff here. And then that'll just go in something along those lines. Let's go ahead and get this installed. So as far as what I want facing up, we'll probably just have it like that, which shows the actual value of the cap. So we'll need to trim the edges there. It's a fairly tight fit actually. Perfect, just like that. So we'll go ahead and solder this side first. Lovely. So let's see if I can give you guys a close up what that looks like. Perfect, so there we have three stuffed caps. And uh, now we can go ahead and flip it over and go to the doghouse. All right, so we've got the chassis flipped over here and we can see the doghouse with the cover lifted off. I totally forgot to do this uh, before I finished up part one of this series, but as you can see, it does have some swapped filter caps. These are 500 volt 47 microfarad IC caps. Now IC caps are kind of interesting because um, I guess there's a period where they made very, very poor quality um, caps, or I guess some of their caps are very poor quality. I know they do kind of a range, and Fender in particular used them in a lot of amps, and uh, they just 
failed all the time. So they got a pretty bad rap from that. Um, I'm not sure the quality nowadays. I'm also not sure how old these are because um, I don't have that information as I wasn't the person who installed these in the first place. So with that in mind, I'm just going to go ahead and remove them and swap them with some fresh caps just for peace of mind. So uh, let's go ahead and get prepared for that. So here are the replacement caps I have. These are mod 40 microfarad uh, 500 volt. Now, if we look at the schematic here, we can see three 40 microfarad 450 volt caps are what the um, original schematic called for. So these are 47 microfarad, a bit more. Um, these will be perfect. So just about exactly what the spec calls for. And then we've got this resistor right here, which is a 10K one watt. So we're gonna confirm what that measures. This looks like the original carbon comp. Judging by everything else, I'm sure it's going to be fine, but we'll confirm. Yep, so about 9.8K, which is perfectly reasonable. So let's go ahead and swap these out here. I'm going to go ahead and try and solder these, add some fresh solder to this. And then we'll see if they just pop right out or if we have to do a little bit more work here. Alrighty, just like that. And then we can go ahead and bring in the wick to uh, clean up the last little bit. So now we've got all of those cleaned out enough to fit the leads in cleanly. So we've got the RTV silicon adhesive. This is clear, it doesn't take much. Hold that in place for a second, just so it has a good contact. Beautiful, so that's just gonna stop them from moving around and uh, potentially, you know, if, if it gets moved or banged around a little bit, these are gonna be fine. It's kind of like a glue and then it stops there from being so much stress on the joints, solder joints here if anything gets shifted. So just a helpful little piece to, to add and very easy and cheap as well. So my goal to start is just to fill the hole. I don't want to spend too much time on each one because I don't want to damage any parts. So really I'm just going to make sure there's a, uh, the eyelet is filled all the way around and then I'll go back to it and get the kind of dome action going. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and get a little bit more of a dome going on these. Great, those look really good. I'm really happy with that. Um, obviously there is some um, uh, flux and stuff off on the edges. I will clean that up, no big deal. But uh, this is about ready to go, except for one final thing, and um, it's gonna require a test that I'm not sure I can do today, but uh, I'm gonna go over it to the best of my knowledge currently. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll see what you guys think and if you have any ideas about it. So let's go ahead and flip the chassis back over. Whoops, one more thing I wanted to show, and that is this inside the doghouse cover. I've got a little note. Now, as mentioned in the first part of this series, um, I have no intention of ever selling this. This is, you know, my own personal reverb tank that I use live and I love it. But uh, I think I'm gonna start just doing this in all the amps I work in, um, at least where it makes sense, to just kind of make a little note. For example, with these IC caps that were in here, I have no idea when they were installed, were they put in a decade ago or you know, two months before I bought it. So I ripped them out. Now these caps are very cheap, so it's not a big deal um, to swap them, and I'd rather just do it for peace of mind anyways on my own stuff, but Regardless, I'm just going to um, start putting little notes like these, especially in the dog houses because it's so simple. And that way there's no confusion. And then I also obviously wrote stuffed. Now, I'm pretty dubious of the um, claim that people actually, you know, do it to uh, fool somebody into thinking AMP is all original. 
Um, I think it's more just aesthetics personally, and that's obviously why I did it in this, as well as just trying to, you know, test it out, see see how to do it, because I've never done it before, and it's my own personal amp, so I feel comfortable playing around with it a little bit. So anyways, all that to say, let's go ahead and throw on this cover back, and then we can flip the chassis over and talk about the one last thing I wanted to cover. All right, so the final piece for this that I want to talk about has to do with the ground connection right here on the three prong. So this uh, reverb unit came to me with the three prong already installed as showed in part one. Um, this was not connected to ground technically, you know, it wasn't connected directly to ground. It had a terminal strip off of this bolt and then two diodes. And then this was connected to the diodes. So I was very confused. I'd never seen that before. I asked several very experienced, knowledgeable people what they thought that was for, and they had no idea either. Well, some other people that um, had a bit more experience with this type of um, unit, with the reverb units, um, basically explained to me that there's a potential ground loop issue having the reverb unit grounded, um, which is really kind of blew my mind when I first heard that because, you know, obviously all you hear is three prong, three prong, three prong, three prong, anything that has a two prong. Um, well, because the reverb unit, you're connecting your guitar to this, and then this is connected over to the amplifier, which in this case is grounded now because all of my amplifiers have three prong power cords. Well, you're actually um, opening the door for a ground loop. And so you'll get a possibly a loud hum that uh, is caused by the ground connected to the chassis here versus not having a, a ground connection. Um, now, when people build kits of these reverb units, there's a, a pretty, you know, um, radical change to the grounding scheme to get around that and still have the three prong. They'll have like bus wire and kind of um, floating grounds. It's it's a whole thing. And uh, it's, that's great if you have a, you know, a kit or even the reissue, as I learned, has that same kind of special grounding scheme. Uh, but when it comes to a, you know, nearly all original um, vintage unit like this, you're not going to want to redo all the grounds in it. It just doesn't make sense. So I'm left with a couple options if I do have a lot of hum. Um, contrary, you know, to basically everything I've ever heard, one option is just literally snipping the green ground connection and not having a ground connection for this. Now I've heard that, uh, you know, basically this will become grounded because it'll be connected to the amplifier. And, um, I might be mis explaining that. There's people much smarter than me that are that I'm talking to about this sort of thing. Um, but basically, it's common to leave these ungrounded, be it uh, either maintaining a three prong or just not adding a three prong to them at all. Um, another option is this kind of complicated um, diode terminal strip resistor network, kind of going back to what was in here before, but it, it actually wasn't done correctly. It should have a resistor there as well. Um, that's one possible solution, but then also in doing that, you're kind of partially losing the safety from the ground. But then other people are telling me <laughs> that uh, it's not necessary because this is not going to be plugged into nothing. This will always be plugged into an amplifier that is grounded. So um, all of that to say, I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but uh, other people do. And their recommendation was for me to plug this into an amp and see if I get a lot of hum. And if I don't, leave it. If I do, then it's time to dive into, you know, what we can do about this. So I'm going to leave you guys with um, that. I'm not going to kind of uh, show that right now. Uh, but what we will do to finish this video out is fire it up and just make sure it's working. Um, well, I can't really test if it's working because I don't have an amp next to me, but we'll make sure that uh, it is getting voltage and everything looks okay. So let's go ahead and get prepared for that. All right, so we've got it hooked up with tubes in it and the power cord going to this current limiter, which is then going to a variac. I've got the multimeter connected, chassis ground, and then to the um, uh, transformer right here, which according to the schematic, we should be getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 volts if it's operating correctly. Now it will be a little off with the current limiter and chain. We're gonna go ahead and slowly bring up the voltage, flicker on. Boom, we're getting voltage. We're now up to about 70 volts from the wall. All right, that's 120 volts. And uh, it says 295 here on the schematic and we're um, 284, so that's fairly close. We got the pilot light on, hopefully you can see that. 
So that looks good. Now we can go ahead and check voltage in a couple other places, but everything looks fine. My main thing I just want to confirm is there will be no issue with the caps here um, being stuffed. Obviously, it was the first time doing that, so I just want to confirm there. But everything else looks good as far as I can tell. So I think we're good to go. Now, I uh, won't know until we actually plug it into something, but uh, we'll go ahead and do that tomorrow. And we'll um, hopefully confirm that we don't need to do anything with the chassis ground here. But if we do, we will figure something out. There's one more thing I wanted to check real quick that I just remembered, and that is how leaky these caps are, especially this Astron. So these are kind of known to be pretty leaky caps. Um, blue molded are also known for the opposite of being, you know, pretty stout. So I've actually never seen or heard of a blue molded in the 0.002 value. So I'm not sure if that's why the Astron is here, if they didn't really make them in that value or what. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and check if this is leaky or not. I'm not really also sure how much that would affect, you know, a reverb unit or not, but uh, I believe to check a leaky cap is to just see if there's any DC on the negative end um, that's going to ground. I could be wrong, I've never done this before, so go ahead and drop a comment um, if I'm doing this wrong, if there's a better way to do this. So I'm just gonna connect this to that lead there. And we got 0.06 volts, so uh, that's nothing. So assuming just for right now that I'm doing this correctly, uh, and that tells us that we're okay. So let's check, this is a brand new cap, I guess is a baseline, this should be zero, and it is. So that is good. Um, and then we've got the blue molded's there. I mean, I, I'm sure they're fine. Let's check this one. Yeah, 0.05, that's nothing. This one, zero volts. So yeah, I think uh, all of these are totally fine. Um, and the Astron is fine too, so that can stay. So there you go. Now, <laughs> now we are actually done with this video and we will come back tomorrow with an amp to be able to make sure it all works and the grounding is okay. All right, till next time, see ya.